Hi everyone and welcome to the first video in the new LARP theory series. This one will be covering some of the basic elements of designing a LARP game. So we'll be breaking down some of the concepts and explaining them to you. There will be more detail in later videos, but for the time being, let's look at some of the overview elements. First thing you might want to ask why you would design a game. Why would you spend all the time and effort to put in these different elements within the game? Can't you just go out and play? And while in some cases you can, you generally get more out of a game that has been designed and specifically that has been designed well. So you can just get a bunch of friends, go out and go, yep, we're going to hit each other with swords or we're going to make believe or whatever the case may be. But if you design the game specifically and especially design it with an outcome in mind, you've got far more chance of achieving that outcome and having a more richly rewarding game experience. So we're going to break down the different elements of design into a couple of different categories. The first is making choices. It is an important element of any design process to make choices which will add to your desired outcome. One of the big things that choices will allow you to do is provide direction. You don't want uh, the, the game or the players to go off in every different direction. You want them to be working towards a common goal. It also helps you to establish a style for the game. And the last two elements which a good design process will do will allow you to resolve conflict within the game and without, and also allows you to make sure that you have the logistics of the game covered. So the first part we're going to be talking about is making choices. As a designer of anything, whether that is a logo, a, a game, or any other sort of endeavor, you need to make choices that allow you to create what you're intending to do. So within the game environment, there's a whole raft of different choices that you can make. Some examples of the choices that you might make within the game design, uh, how large a game it'll be, how many players, whether you'll have uh, the types of conflict that will occur, whether you'll, what genre or style, all these different things will affect the outcome and the experience that the people involved will have. So we'll cover a lot of the different uh, specifics of that. Um, in later videos, especially different types and genres and formats of LARP events. But it's important to know that these are the tools, the decisions that you make are the tools at your disposal to help craft and create the environment that your players will be taking part in. So probably the biggest part of the design process is to provide direction for the participants. So if you just have an open sandbox, so to speak, then you might have someone turn up as a medieval knight, another person as a Jedi, another person as a escapee from Alcatraz. Who knows what the environment will be unless you provide boundaries and direction. So as you are designing, you'll need to create what is and is not included in your game. To provide direction for where you're trying to take the story or to take the game experience. So if it's going to be a fantasy game, establish what types of characters are appropriate, are not appropriate. If there's elements within the storytelling structure that need to be explained to the players, make sure that everyone is on the same page and that you can go forward with the community behind you. If you are telling a horror story, make sure the players are aware so they can opt in to those environments. If you are telling a heroic story, make sure that that is aware, if you're, especially if you're telling something outside of the normal heroic structure. Make sure that is also very aware. So you should be having all your design choices in the same direction to the goal that you have set out to begin with. Establishing a consistent style also relates to some of the choices that you'll be making in the previous two steps, but it goes a bit beyond that. One of the things is also aesthetic style, so a look to the game. If you are wanting to be able to create a visual impact on the players, then explain that to them. Just make choices of, no, this is not appropriate. Yes, this is appropriate uh, for each of the different um, groups or styles within your game environment. The example I'll use is After the Fall, a post-apocalyptic game that I was helping to run. We had a list of all the different sort of um, pieces of equipment and clothing and stylistic, stylistic choices that players of the different factions can have. It creates an environment where you can visually discern one type of player from another without needing to ask them out of character what is going on. Another thing you might do, for example, in a fantasy world is to distinguish between the different classes of people. Peasants, working class, nobility might be visually distinct or might have other sort of indicators within the game 
so that you can immerse yourself within the game and have that style going forward. Resolving conflict. Now this is quite a broad topic because one of the things it does uh, cover is combat. And combat has traditionally been a huge part of the heroic LARP style that is very familiar across the world. In certain theatre style LARPs, they won't have necessarily any combat, but they generally still have conflict. So for an interesting story, obviously you want to have some degree of tension or conflict in there, which can either be resolved or it can entirely tear the place apart, which sometimes is a good outcome. But the types of mechanics that you use and the rules and the structure that you use for resolving conflict has a big impact on the style and the feeling that the players and other participants have of the game. Again, to use uh, examples within common fantasy, if you have creatures with lots of hit points, it can feel almost computer game styled uh, experience. Whereas if people have very few hits, it can be gritty and a far more visceral as like people don't want to go into combat or they might die. Whether characters can permanently die or not will definitely affect the degree of immersion and investment they have within the character and the immediate environment, but also the degree in which a lot of players are willing to invest in kit and other aesthetic choices. So it's in some ways a balancing act. You don't want to necessarily have expect someone to pay thousands of dollars for kit in a game where life is very easy to be taken from you. But having mechanics in place which will foster the style of play that you are after is very important. So designing the game well in regards to logistics is also a bit of a balancing act in a very different way. One of the things that you will be looking at is what needs to be done, tasks and equipment and things like this, which need to be brought to site or utilised or props that need to be made, and how that can be done in a very efficient manner. This can come down to how you set up your design team. That is still part of the design process, how many people you have running the show will very much determine what sort of resources you can bring to bear. The time frame for the event, you might need to have set up time, you might need to have pauses within the game to change things around, you might need to have timeouts within the game to allow props to be brought into play. All these different things should be worked out ahead of time and part of the design process. A big part will be delegating tasks. For smaller events, there's the tendency for the head organiser to try and do everything themselves, but this ultimately leads to either burnout or a game which is not as efficient and is very much uh, not as enjoyable as it could be. So this really is just a brief overview of some of the ideas of how the design process works. Each of these categories will be gone into in a further video, so keep an eye out for that. But the idea that I really want to get across is that you need to be specific and deliberate about trying to achieve an outcome and then make intelligent and informed choices to achieve that outcome. And this can be from anything. This can be from, I want to get more people. I want to create an exciting game. I want to create emotion in the game. I want to do this or that. Any of these choices and outcomes are, can be quite great for a game but you need to understand the connection between the choices you make and the effect that it has on the player's experience of the game. So if you like the, some of the discussion here, please subscribe. There will also be a playlist just for these LARP theory videos. So if you're enjoying the discussion, you can also check that out.